Hello, I'm David. Hi, I'm Julie. Now we're going to do a review of Chicken, which is for two to eight players. It takes about 10 to 20 minutes to play, and we believe it's for ages eight and up. So this is a push-your-luck game where you are racing to be the first to score 25 points hatching chickens. Yep. Now, you may have seen this review before. We made a rules mistake. Well, I mean, I did anyway. And that's part of the review because with a lack of examples in the rule book and buried rules, you can make mistakes like I did. And we've done that before with one of his other games. This mm -hmm. is Scott Elms. We did that with Martian Dice, right. which had, in fact, there was debates on BGG on, on the rule that we made the mistake. Really? On. Yeah. Wow. All right. So you're going to start out with four dice, the first player. These dice sh are ref referred to as being white in the rule book, but they shipped as pink. So just keep that in mind. Each person picks a meeple, and they start here on zero. The four yellow dice and four orange dice will be in the chicken coop. These are the expansion, which I will explain. And you're going to keep track of your points around here. So the first player will roll these dice, and you want to get chickens, which are these right here. These are etched dice. Yeah, they're nice. And you want to avoid foxes. So you roll the four dice. And so I got a chicken. That's one point if I stop. And I have eggs. Now I will hatch the eggs regardless if I stop or I roll again. You, you get one reroll. So if I do hatch, you start with yellow and go to orange. Yellow has more chickens on its side uh, and one fox. And when the four in the game, yellow, then you go to orange and you have a double chicken, but you also have two foxes. And you bust when you get three foxes. So I'm going to hatch those and I must choose yellow. And I want to reroll these. So I have three chickens. Now this is a rule that I messed up on. Before I pass the dice to Julie, I must hatch the egg. So it goes to here. Now Julie will get these dice and I will have three points. And I will keep on going back and forth. Now if someone busts, let's say you get three foxes, either on your initial roll or your re-roll, all the special dice go back in the coop and you get zero points. If you get a bunch of dice passed to you, let's say we're playing with all the dice now, I can chicken out. If I chicken out, I go back a point and I put all the special dice back and I'm less likely to bust then. So then I would re-roll again and I can stop right there uh, and get one point. Say so I do that and then I pass the dice to so Julie, go ahead and roll. So Julie gets two dice and she rolls the blanks and the eggs. She has no points yet, so she's deciding to do her one re-roll. And so there she get, gets two points. She hatches the eggs and she gets two points. And then it goes to me. Now I have to decide do I roll all these dice or chicken out. So you keep on going until you have 25 points. Now the egg expansion makes it a little different. Instead, you put all the dice except the base dice in the bag and you have two new dice. You have blue the dog. And blue has two sides where it's the dog. And if the happy dog comes up, you get one point. If you don't re-roll, or if you do take your re-roll and he's still... Because you must re-roll him if you take a second roll. If you decide to re-roll, I should say. So if you, if you don't re-roll, or you roll him and he comes up, happy face is worth one point. If you get bark, you put it off to the side with the, the foxes, and it blocks one fox. So that means you would take, it would take now four foxes to bust, and you have two blanks. Here you have a special hatching die. When you get this, you hatch another die, and it's also worth one point at the end of the game. Well, at the end of your turn, I should say. And you must re-roll this die. However, it also has a two chicken and a couple of foxes. So the setup's a little different. You take all of the special dice, put it in the bag, and you draw five out of the out of the for the coop. Coop. So now, when you hatch eggs, you can draw any die you want here. You could even skip the orange, or you can draw out of the bag randomly. So if I go, I have two eggs, and I will. I'm going to take it out of the out of the bag randomly because I want I want to try to get blue, and I did. I got the special dice. So now I'm rolling, and I got a fox, didn't do anything. I got three points, and I get to choose for Julie. I'm going to choose the orange because that has more foxes, then I pass it to her. So go ahead and go. Now let's say you got blue. 
Julie, if she stops here, she would get one, two, three points. But if she decides to keep on pushing, let's say you do, you take these dice, you must re-roll blue and the hatch. Actually, you got to take another die here for the hatch. Oh, okay. So now you're re-rolling all those dice. That's if she decides to push her luck like that. I busted big time. So it would have been better for her not to do that. I just wanted to show <laughs> that when you get blue on your first roll, if you continue to push your luck, you must re-roll him. And then if you get this, you get you hatch a, hatch a die, but you don't get the point unless it comes up again because you must re-roll that as well. So you keep on playing until the first player gets 25 points. You don't play an equal number of turns. So we're going to give you our rating now, and then we will give you our reasons for our rating. So let's take a look at what we said. Ah. So I gave it a seven, usually willing to play. And I gave it an eight because I love dice and I would definitely suggest this game. <laughs> right. We've been playing this more often. I guess it was a good thing that we did make a rules mistake. I know. I'm... Because we played it more often and we've liked it more. Yep. I, rate, I, I Initially it was a, we gave it sixes. We did. But we've been playing it more often. So it definitely, definitely grew on us. Okay, so it's a solid push your luck race game and the, the pieces are quality. Mm -hmm. You have, these are etched dice. I love that. And the the bag, it's a decent bag. It's not the biggest bag in the in the world. Uh, That's okay. But it's not shedding, at least. Nope. Sometimes you get bags and they shed a lot. Uh, it's shedding a little bit. But not too bad. Not as bad as other bags. No. And this is nice. Mm -hmm. Play for the nice. for the price point. Okay, this is not an expensive game. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, so it's low tension. Obviously, very little choice. Mm -hmm. But that's typical with push your luck games. Yeah. There's not much choice when you play Can't Stop or Ink and Gold. It's kind of like written what you have to do. So. Right, or zombies. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the expansion improves gameplay, so we won't play this without the expansion. No. Now, a negative is the buried rules. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. What we messed up on, it needed to include a turn order, okay, in the very beginning. Right away, it just tells you what you, what you do and at the very end here, it tells you that you must re hatch eggs, even if you don't take a second roll. At the very end here. So it goes through all this. Yeah. It needed to have a turn sequence here and provide an example. So I, I missed that. And you see, because I was paranoid of missing things, I marked it with these stickers. A game this simple should have bullet points of turn sequence and have an example of play. Okay. Uh, that's why I made that mistake. So that's why it's a negative, because other people will do will make mistakes as well. And it references white dice that are actually pink. So that's a manufacturing issue. I would prefer... They're almost peach colored. Yeah. I mean, look, they're supposed to be eggs, right? It shouldn't be pink. It should be white dice, as it's referred to in the rule book. And in fact, the Kickstarter showed white dice I still well. think they're more peach than pink, because look, this one's really pink. Okay, it's fine. It's peach. <laughs> uh, if you want to see what Julie's referring to right here. Uh, so Math Connections, this is a great game to play with young people. The reason why it's not higher on my list is because I, I enjoy Ink and Gold more. I enjoy Zombies more, but that's not appropriate for the school. Mm -hmm. uh, some people don't like the idea of having shotguns and zombies, so I can see why this yeah, is... protect yourself. This is more safe. safe yes. Thematically safer. Yes. And I, I prefer Can't Stop. Doesn't mean I won't play this. I'll play those games over this one. Okay. All right, so let's see what Julie has to say. What do I have to say? It's a fun push your luck dice game, which I love dice. So this is my, just, I'm happy with this. I love that the dice are etched. And as David said before, the play mat and the bag are, are, you know, they're decent. They're fine. The playing time is so quick with two people, which is another plus in my book. It's a good filler game. And granted, I didn't have to read the rules, but I found it very easy for David to teach me how to, to play it and picked it up just, I can't snap my fingers very well, but just like that, and it was real easy to play. Yeah, even when I taught it wrong, it was easy to play. <laughs> it was. So, uh, check out our How to Play and Playthrough video. You kind of saw it anyways in the, in the yeah. intro here. It's not meant to be a hard game. No, it's not at to all. Be a, it's supposed to be a filler game that's thematically cute. Yeah, it's very uh, cute. And it's if very you don't fun. have many push your luck games, this is a good one. This is a good one to get. But if you have a lot like we do, you might be like, I already have zombies. I already have ink and gold. I don't need another one. So. But I really like this one. I know you do. <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much, you guys. We will see you in the next video. All right. Bye-bye.